Yurichi has continued to make every demon shit its pants at the mere sight of a red-haired person. But what if this nightmare comes to life? What if Yorichi was transported to the Taisho era in all its glory? Will Muzan ever see this atrocity coming? Will Luffy ever find the One Piece? But, 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 before we proceed, we've chosen the winner from the last video and we'll reveal him or her anywhere in the video. So watch carefully or you might miss your rightful prize. Let's begin. Yorichi strides along with his stoic nature in the thick forest, donning a deep regret in his eyes. Having met the Kamados for the very last time and holding their daughter in his arms had tapped into his memories and made him long for a normal life with his wife Uta and their unborn child. But as Yorichi goes on, the weather suddenly turns turbulent. Looking up in the sky, Yorichi notices a yellow cat, which waves at him and asks him, just kidding. He notices a circular thundercloud and assumes that the gods aren't happy. Giving no more thought to them, he takes a few more steps. But as soon as he exits the forest, a red bolt of lightning strikes him from out of nowhere and knocks him unconscious. Yorichi wakes up and realizes that he was unconscious throughout the day and had only regained consciousness in the night. He looks around and a spine-chilling thought crawls up his psyche as he concludes that he was carried over to a new place by someone while he was knocked out. Suddenly, he overhears the deafening sounds of trees falling nearby and wastes no time. He unsheets his sword and rushes to the location. As soon as he arrives, he spots a wounded Sumiyoshi crawling on the ground, cornered by a white demon. With no hesitation, Yorichi dashes towards the demon and cuts him into a thousand pieces within the blink of an eye. He whips his sword and cleans the demon's blood and sheets it while turning to see if Sumiyoshi is okay. However, as soon as he glances at his old friend's face, he's shocked. He realizes that the person he just saved was not Sumiyoshi, but rather a lookalike. That lookalike turns out to be none other than Tanjiro, the descendant of Sumiyoshi himself. Tanjiro rushes to untangle Nezuko and covers her up in order to protect her from the unknown man. Yorichi once again grips his sword, but briefly spotting Tanjiro's Hanafuda earrings and the Demon Slayer uniform. Realizing that he's a member of the core, he questions Tanjiro about his connection with the demon. However, before Tanjiro could answer, Giyu arrived jumping in between them and raising his sword towards Yorichi. He asks, why the heck do you look more depressed than me? Oh no, that ain't right. He asks Yorichi about his identity and why he's on the mountain against the wishes of Master Ubuyashiki. Yorichi is startled to hear the name Ubuyashiki. However, he chooses to remain silent. This prompts Giyu to attack and subdue the rogue slayer. But as soon as Giyu moves forward, Yorichi partially vanishes from Giyu's sight and hits him with the hilt of his sword, knocking him to the ground. His body loses its strength in an instant, and as he once again tries to get up from the ground to face his opponent, Yorichi lauds him for his perseverance and knocks him out with a second blow. As he starts moving towards Tanjiro once again, he senses a small projectile coming for him from the back and dodges it without much effort. As he turns to determine the source of the knife, he spots the shadow of another swordsman up on the tree. The swordsman is revealed to be none other than Shinobu herself, and as soon as she jumps down to confront Yorichi, he strikes her down in midair and slams her onto the floor like my Mitsuri body pillow. Oh, I gotta stop leaking my personal life details here. Anyways, as both the Hashiras get up and dash towards Yorichi to attack him simultaneously, a Kasugai Crow announces that all the survivors of Mount Natakumo have been summoned by the Oyakata-sama. Hearing this, everyone stops immediately and sheaths their swords as they follow the crow back to the base in utter silence. Yorichi realizes the situation he's been thrown into, and as he reaches the headquarters, he bows before Kagaya as soon as he appears. The other Hashiras get confused. However, Yorichi's aura makes them steer clear of him. Nonetheless, Obanai raises the question of Yorichi's presence, and the other Hashiras chime in as well. Kagaya instructs everyone to stop and asks Yorichi to rise. Kagaya greets him with a familiar tone and welcomes him to the future. Everyone is shocked upon hearing this. Yorichi asks Kagaya the reason behind his familiarity, and he explains that he envisioned him through his foresight. However, he is still an anomaly in this world, and he cannot further predict what would happen to him. Kagaya introduces Yorichi to the Hashiras as the man who developed the breathing techniques, and the first slayer to ever encounter Muzan. Everyone is flabbergasted, but Tsunami drives everyone's attention towards Tanjiro and Nezuko. Kagaya, however, deems that the situation has already been taken care of, as Urokodaki, Giyu, and Tanjiro have taken responsibility for Tanjiro's demon accomplice. Sanemi tries to reignite the argument. However, Yorichi swiftly replies that he can see through his aggression, which clouds his warm heart, and that he should spread those feelings of warmth towards his juniors too, by keeping his faith in them. Kagaya declares that whatever the future may hold, the appearance of the progenitor of Bretts is sure to turn the tide in their favor. Tanjiro is dismissed, and in a more personal meeting, Yorichi iterates his story of meeting Muzan and the secret of the Bretts and the demon slayer marks to the other Hashiras. However, he doesn't plan to sit idle and request submission from Kagaya. Ren Goku butts in and wholeheartedly offers the inspection of the Mugen train incident, which happens to be under his jurisdiction. Kagaya approves the mission, but he insists Yorichi to take a few lower-ranked slayers with them, one of whom he knows. 
A few days pass and the Kamaboko squad recovers. They are sent to their next mission, and much to their surprise, they meet up with Yorichi himself. Stunned by the advancement in technology, Yorichi strolls around in the railway station, along with Tanjiro and Inosuke, as the duo acts completely aloof. However, as soon as the train arrives, Yorichi refuses to board it, claiming that the train is void of any demon presence. Suddenly, Yorichi rushes out of the door of the station in a jiffy, leaving the three behind in confusion. Tanjiro traces Yorichi through his smell and finds him outside confronting the slasher demon. Apparently, he had seen him through the forest and found him lurking around in search of prey. The demon takes a glance of Yorichi and freezes in fear as the cells in his body start going nuts due to seeing Yorichi. Yorichi goes towards his sword, and before the demon could even say a word, Yorichi dashes like a god covered in the aura of the sun decapitates him. The demon shrieks loudly due to the burn sustained on his neck after the decapitation, but the feelings soon turn to regret as the demon drifts into the afterlife. The Kamaboko squad once again insists on boarding the train, assuring Yorichi that it's just a modern transport vehicle. He clarifies that the train doesn't frighten him, rather the train wasn't the target they were after, as he already asked the conductor about the location of the Mugen train. However, he has a feeling that after slaying this demon, Muzan would react in a very unpredictable manner, as he'd do anything to steer clear of his way. Yorichi's bad omen comes true as suddenly a large boulder lands near the fore and they avoid it by a hair by jumping away. The Kamaboko squad gets scattered and even before the slasher demon fully turned to ash, Akaza appears out of the dust to correct the mistake Muzan made 500 years ago. He immediately attacks Tanjiro. However, Zenitsu uses the first form of thunder breathing and carries him away from Akaza. Akaza immediately shifts his attention towards Yorichi. However, Akaza senses something off about the swordsman as he takes a fighting stance. Muzan's cells once again start going into panic once they get a glimpse of Yorichi through Akaza's eyes. He asks Yorichi if he's a Hashira. However, Yorichi simply replies that he can find out for himself as he grips his katana. Akaza initiates technique development, and as he progresses to the compass needle, he is confused as Yorichi oozes strength, yet the compass needle cannot detect a speck of battle spirit from the swordsman. Akaza moves forward to attack Yorichi, nonetheless, as he's been ordered by Muzan to end both the red-haired swordsmen. Yorichi closes the distance as well, but before Akaza could land a single blow, Yorichi cuts off his arm. Akaza tries to regenerate his arm, but the burns on his wound due to the red sword regresses healing. Panic sets into Akaza's mind, and in an effort to back off, he plants his feet on the ground and propels backwards. Yorichi spots the haste in Akaza's movement, and before he could move too far from him, he takes in a deep breath, and with tremendous speed, cuts off both his legs as well. Akaza I'm tries dying. to crawl away in desperation and exclaims, What in the Saw movie series is this shit? I didn't sign up for this! Just kidding. Akaza once again tries his best to regenerate his arms, and after putting all his strength in his legs with much effort, he's able to regenerate his legs. However, as soon as he plants his feet to get up on his leg, Yorichi swiftly crosses over to his front and stares into his soul like a god of destruction. Even before a single thought of survival could cross Akaza's mind, Yorichi lops off his head. Tanjiro and the others watch in silence as Yorichi displays his superior skills and almost toys around with Akaza, the Upper Moon 3, while showing no signs of hatred or exertion. Akaza's cut-off head rolls towards Tanjiro. Noticing the warmth in the boy's eyes, he reminded of a figure from his past, his master. Akaza's head starts to disintegrate. However, Inosuke yells and warns Yorichi to look behind him. Heeding the warning, Yorichi turns behind and spots a headless Akaza, taking the stance to unleash destructive death. With concern over encountering the first demon ever after Muzan, who doesn't die after a beheading, Yorichi immediately combines all the forms of his breathing, and even before Akaza could unleash a single blow, he cuts his body into a million pieces, ending the enigma once and for all. Yorichi sheets his sword and rushes towards the Kamaboko squad, to see if they're hurt. As Yorichi helps Tanjiro up, Rengoku arrives at the spot following Shintaro, only to be humbled by learning what has occurred. Meanwhile, all of the demons are summoned to the Infinity Castle, where they witness a sight never seen before. The frown on Muzan's face was enough to send Kokushibo into a state of panic and confuse the other upper moods. Soon Muzan, with a stuttering voice and veins popping out of his head, announces that the Scarlet Swordsman he encountered centuries ago has reappeared and that he cannot return to the surface until that threat is dealt with. Kokushibo rushes forward in a jiffy and unsheaths his voracious sword. He declares that destiny has provided him with an opportunity he thought impossible. He promises Muzan the head of his brother and instantly leaves the Infinity Castle. The other demons, shocked by Kokushibo's revelation, look towards Muzan. However, tired of explaining and reliving the horrifying memories, Muzan stares at the other demons and through his cells in them, makes them go through the same hopelessness he once felt against Yorichi. All the demon stomachs begin to hurl, and they get terrified to such an extent that even the cold-blooded Doma displays traces of fear within his colorful eyes. The lights in the Infinity Castle shut down as Muzan withdraws into one of its crevices, and Nakime transports everyone back. Doma in his mansion is ecstatic, as for the first time in two centuries, 
He's felt a tiny shred of emotion. He vows to find and battle Yorichi before Kokushibo can lay his hands on him. Thus, he sets a foolish yet clever plan into action. Doma travels to a nearby town and starts slaughtering people right before everyone's eyes against the wishes of Muzan using a makeshift ice sword. His plan works as a demon slayer spots him and dashes down to kill him. Doma plays with the slayer for a while. However, as soon as the sun nears the horizon, he cuts down both arms of the demon slayer and escapes, taunting him to bring in the scarlet blade for him to devour. The message successfully reaches the headquarters through the Kasugai crows, and the situation is interpreted as an act of aggression against Yorichi by Kagaya. Kagaya summons Yorichi and informs him about the incident. Yorichi, with a concerned look on his face and the partial information from the slayer that encountered the demon, derives that the demon is none other than Zoro, the king of hell himself. Bad joke, I know. Anyway, Yorichi concludes that the demon who uses a sword could only be his brother, Michikatsu, who defected from the demon slayers 500 years ago and killed the then leader. Kagaya, with his saintly demeanor, promises Yorichi that he wouldn't have to face the challenge himself, as it's definitely a trap, and that the other Hashira could work their way around it. However, Yorichi gets on his feet and declares that he'll face the challenge himself, claiming that he has something that is sure to draw out Muzan and end his murderous crusade. However, Yorichi seeks permission to take Tanjiro with him, as he has grown insanely stronger under his guidance, and has become the second known user of the Sun Breath in history. After several days of travel, Yorichi and Tanjiro reach the designated village, only to find it completely abandoned and frozen in ice. Suddenly, freezing winds cover the landscape, and Doma appears from within a house. Tanjiro and Yorichi clench their swords, unsheathing them. However, Doma immediately conjures up a clone and sets it after Tanjiro so that he can face Yorichi alone. Tanjiro is taken aback. However, Yorichi pays no attention to it and states that the demon has dug his own grave by showing up after so long. Yorichi stares right into Doma's eyes and asks if Muzan's listening. He proclaims that he has the blue spider lily he's been looking for all these years and flaunts it right before his eyes. Doma gets confused, but before he could realize what has happened, Yorichi dashes towards the front and beheads Doma in mere seconds. As soon as Doma's head falls onto the floor, in a wild turn of events, Kokushibo is revealed to have been standing right behind him. Barely managing to dodge the attack Yorichi set off, the ice clone fighting Tanjiro withers away and Yorichi commands him to stand out of the bout. Kokushibo unsheats his flesh-ridden katana as it branches off like a tree sprouting multiple blades. The upper demon declares that he's grown exceptionally stronger these last few centuries and that he's going to prove it by burying him right now. Yorichi too unsheats his sword and utters the words, Brother, you might have gotten strong all these years, but I must end the abomination you've become. It's my sole duty. Yorichi roars, here I come. And within the blink of an eye, both swordsmen clash swords in the traditional samurai fashion. Yorichi drives past Kokushibo's sword and hits the demon with a double slash, inflicting a cross wound on his chest. The wound starts to burn as Kokushibo's body tries to heal, yet the scar refuses to close due to the burn received from Yorichi's scarlet blade. Yorichi turns back and with a serious look on his face asks his brother, Is this all? Is this the extent of the strength you've accumulated by consuming innocent souls? Kokushibo, frustrated by Yorichi's unending potential and ailing from the battle wounds, turns into his aggravated state and vows to kill Yorichi. Kokushibo unleashes numerous slashes using his moon breath, which hit the surrounding houses, tearing them into shreds. Tanjiro struggles to avoid the slashes but manages to outmaneuver them somehow. Kokushibo angered to his limit spots Tanjiro struggling and decides to finish off the breath first. Yorichi realizes Kokushibo's intentions and even before he could turn to face Tanjiro, he dashes towards him. Kokushibo tenses up all his muscles, which confuses Yorichi. Yorichi swings his sword with the usual flair. However, for the first time in the history of mankind, Kokushibo accomplishes the feat of avoiding Yorichi's sword. Kokushibo takes a few steps back and clenches his sword tightly. Suddenly, the branches of his sword burst out in a frenzy and directly head towards Yorichi. Yorichi manages to avoid all of the blows. However, as he deflects them all, Kokushibo bursts into a maniacal laughter. A frown climbs up Yorichi's face as he notices that one of the blades he avoided directly hit Tanjiro. Yorichi calms down his nerves and, gathering all his strength, swings his blade towards Kokushibo. He cuts Kokushibo's torso off of his body as he hits the ground. Yorichi turns to look for Tanjiro, but his jaw drops to the floor upon witnessing the scene. Once again, he's brought face to face with the Demon King himself as he stands behind and injured Tanjiro. Muzan raises his fist to finish off Tanjiro, proclaiming that not even he could keep him away from the blue spider lily. Yorichi stomps his feet to move towards Muzan. However, Kokushibo grabs his foot. Muzan releases his attack, but miraculously, before it hits Tanjiro, Muzan's whole torso is blown off by a hit, and it is revealed that Giyome followed the duo on Kagaya's order. One by one, other Hashiras reveal themselves as they surround a flabbergasted Muzan. Upon seeing the situation he's in, Muzan bows his head down and lets loose a smirk. He declares that all of them have walked straight into their graves, as Nakime opens up portals to the Infinity Castle, and the Slayers fall into it one after the other. Yorichi cuts off 
Kokushibo's arm, and both he and Giyu rush towards Tanjiro in order to aid him. However, all three of them end up getting sucked up in the Infinity Castle as well. Mitsuri, Obanai, and Tenjin fall straight into the room where Upper Moon Six Daki and Gyotaro wait to assault them. However, this time around, all the Hashiras come prepared. And even before Gyotaro could separate his body from that of Daki, Tenjin summons his Demon Slayer Mark and beheads him in an instant. Tenjin immediately starts boasting about his flashiness of his attacks. However, Obanai soon realizes that Gyotaro isn't dead yet. Gyotaro releases his Blood Demon Art upon Tenjin, which he barely manages to avoid. Obanai decodes that both of them need to be beheaded together in order for them to die and instructs Mitsuri to provide an opening. While Tenjin avoids Gyotaro's attacks, he's suddenly pulled away by Mitsuri's sword and slammed into Daki. As soon as both of them hit the floor, Obanai swiftly beheads the siblings in a single strike. Gyomi, Rengoku, and Shinobu land in another room where an old man begs for their forgiveness. As soon as Shinobu proceeds to check up on the old man, he bursts out and separates into his four forms, revealing that he is in fact the Upper Moon Four, Han Tengu. Sekido unleashes lightning on the slayers. However, Gyomi soon overpowers the lightning and drives an attack towards Sekido. Even before Karaku and the others could join in on the fight, Gyome throws his flail towards Sekido and binds his neck. He pulls him towards himself and immediately severs his head. Rengoku, now free from the lightning, summons his Demon Slayer Mark and takes on Aizetsu and Urogi alone. Overwhelming them with his fierce strikes, Shinobu tries to keep Karaku at bay, but she barely manages to avoid his air attacks. Soon, Shinobu summons her Demon Slayer Mark as well and successfully impales Karaku with her Wisteria ridden blade. Sekido realizes that the threat is too big for the four and ends up pulling all the other clones into him and transforming into Zohakuten. The Slayer regroups and Gyome shows off his Demon Slayer Marks to the others as he summons it on will. Accessing the transparent world, Gyome reveals that the real body is not the one standing before them. Rather, it's a tiny little runt running around the room. He asks Rengoku to behead the main body while they stop Zohakuten. However, before they could even begin with the plan, Sanemi comes out of nowhere and beheads Hantengu himself. Muichiro soon enters the room explaining that they already beheaded the fish guy and that Muzan is the only one left. Meanwhile, Yorichi searches for Muzan in the endless expanse of the castle while Giyu follows him, carrying an injured Tanjiro on his back. They are soon united with the other remaining Hashiras and finally, they come across the main hall where Muzan stands all alone. Everyone takes a deep breath and charges towards the Demon King. However, a regenerated Kokushibo jumps in between and releases several strikes, forcing the Slayers to back off. Even with Kokushibo back in the game, Muzan is still outmatched as he insists on aiming for Yorichi and somehow getting hold of the blue spider lilies. Muzan and Kokushibo stand back to back. However, as the Slayers get ready to release their attacks, the Infinity Castle starts moving at random. It is revealed that Nakime has overloaded the rooms with energy in order for Muzan to escape. Yorichi yells at the top of his lungs and for the first time in his life, anger emerges on his face. He commands everyone to stop attacking and he's going to end this fight here and now. Yorichi, with a speed even faster than that of lightning, paces towards the demon duo. Kokushibo and Muzan release their strongest attacks in an instant. However, Yorichi, unfazed like a god, swings his sword, inflicting numerous slices on both of them. The castle stops rumbling and running haywire as Kokushibo and Muzan both fall to the ground in pieces. The blue spider lily in Yorichi's pocket falls onto the floor. Muzan's severed hand tries to grab the one thing he has desired for millennia. However, as soon as he touches it, his hand vanishes off the face of the earth as his body turns into dust. All the demon slayers celebrate. However, suddenly the castle starts collapsing. Giyu determines that the whole castle exists beyond their mortal realm, and they are all going to perish along with it. However, as the slayers huddle up to say their last goodbyes, lightning strikes the castle once again. A few moments later, everyone gets up and finds themselves in the town where they were sucked into the castle. Everyone thanks God for saving them. However, a distressed Tanjiro reveals that Yorichi wasn't transported along with them, and he most likely died inside. But with a wild twist of fate, Yorichi wakes up in the forest once again. He immediately recognizes the forest, which is actually near the house he used to live in. He rushes towards his house to find Uta, and much to his surprise, finds her drying clothes in the front. Tears start falling from his eyes as he drops to his knees. But suddenly, a young boy grabs him from behind, and with a sweet and calming voice, welcomes his father back.